What up, brothers and sisters? This is your brother, G World 7 underscore D. This is me hitting you with another one. Um, I want you to pay attention to certain detail. Now, this is Nature No No Color Line again. I'm going to turn to page 100 real quick. All right, page 100. Now, we go over one page. Now, I'm showing these pictures already in one of my other ones, but look at this. You see the brother obviously with a crown, man. So <laughs> anybody wear a crown, that's not a slave, that's a king. Then you also see like a hat that the Pope or the Archbishop would wear. All right, and, uh, next to a Negro with a crown. Well, one, you hear a lot of Negro scholars tell you you had three black popes in North Africa. Actually, damn near all your popes were originally were black, starting with Sylvester I. Sylvester the first. Damn near all your popes were black in the first place. All right, so you see the Negro with the crown. There's obviously no damn slave or no captive. And then, obviously, you see an archbishop or a cardinal crown or a pope crown. But I want to also want you to look at this symbol. You see the shield right here. You know, like the NFL has a shield. <laughs> and then, oh, Captain America, and here's the X. All right, this X symbol. All right, I want you to pay close attention to that. I'm going to close here. And I'm going to go to my book that I showed you before. A for pure, the implications and ratification of artificial black identity and legal chronology of the Americas from 1492 to 1968, concise, definitive, second edition. Now I'm going to turn it here. Here you see the authentic picture of Montezuma. All right. Now I want you to look up closely. Okay, let me now get the focus. I want to get the focus. Damn, if I get the focus. What you see right there. What you see right here, let me get real clear, you see those two X's, man, double X's, don't you see that, you see those two double X's, you seen the X's over on the shield in Europe, and you see these little double X's right here, you can get real clear, here in America, also I shown before, like you see all the state capitol buildings, all the state capitol buildings and federal capitol buildings had this like this little symbol, this little dome shaped structure. That's what's stolen from us. All right. That architectural structure, that design that was stolen from the Aboriginal black, blacks that were here. I talked about this in one of my other uh, videos, and you see it clear like that. You see this like dome type structure on top of it? You see these little X's over here, that are similar to the ones in Europe. But this dome type structure, like I said, you used to go to every state capital. I'm in Illinois. I'm near Indiana. Yeah, Illinois and Indiana had that, all of them had a state capitol building with the same shape. All right, that idea and architecture structure was stolen from us. Right? I just want to emphasize that. Now I'm going to turn off of that. I'm going to go to sex and race. I want to read something real quick. You know, because a lot of these little Pan Africans, man, they be hooping, hollering, and said we weren't over here. The, wasn't that many of us over here I want to read some real quick because if I can find it in this book and because you know, this is very important because we need to really pick up on our history because our stuff has been totally stolen from us man it has been totally stolen from us now yeah here it is right here okay I'm read like yeah the Spaniards Portuguese and Italians even of the 19th century has so much visible Negro strain, it is reasonably, excuse me, it is reasonable to suppose that among the first explorers and colonizers of the New World, this wasn't no damn New World, there must have been many individuals of Negro descent. Although there is little mention of them as such, the reason is that mulattoes were regarded as white when a European said and still says Negro he means an unmixed black man for instance on Columbus's third voyage only one Negro Dago is mentioned and in the list of noblemen and gentlemen of quality who Accompanied, accompanied Balboa to the Pacific, only one Negro, only one Negro, Nufo de 
Olano is named. But that does not mean that there were not other near blacks. On those voyages. Also, Pedro Alonso, the pilot of Columbus's flagship on the first voyage, is mentioned in the libret the libretto. The original account of the voyage which was published in 1521, four times as a Negro. Samuel Byrd Thatcher, an authority on Columbus, says, however, that Alonzo Il Negro was a misprint in the Venetian and ought to have read Alonzo Il Negro. <laughs> Thus, the dispute hinges on whether an N or a G was meant. That Thatcher also is in error is not impossible. Now, it is not impossible either that Columbus was of mixed blood. His complexion was olive. His cheekbones were high. And his lips as seen in the Yanis portrait, were full Negro kind. This portrait, the oldest of all, was thought the most characteristic of him by his hair, the Duke of uh, Veragula. Now, I'm going to stop right there, man. This is off of Sex and Race, Volume 2. <laughs> you see, you hear constantly a lot of these Pan Africans, man, saying that black folks didn't come over here, or you hear some of these little Negro stories saying blacks did not sell over here, and they did not know about black people selling over, even with the issue of Mansa Musa. Yeah, black folks sell over to America, but there were black people already here when other black people sell over here. <laughs> so he just incited that Columbus was a Negro. Now, and I also showed you the X symbol that was in America that you see near Black Montezuma and the X symbol on the shield that you seen of black people in Europe. Also, you seen a king's crown that a king of Scotland, Ireland, Wales would have worn. All right. Also, you see the image of a cardinal or a pope hat near the Negro with the crown. So this obviously was not a slave. So you got to put things together. On a shield with the X, and you see the same damn X symbol in America. So you say they didn't have no contact that the Negroes here didn't have contact with the Negroes over in Europe. Of course they did. But what I don't understand, I come these Negro scholars then put this together years ago. This information is in your face, man. I'm glad. I have educators in my family. I've always questioned everything. I always want to know the origins of things. So I did the research myself. And I know that these bastards are lying. Or they just don't know. And they really don't care because they're getting paid at these damn universities. They, all they care about getting their damn tenure and going on with the stupid ass lesson plan that's given to them. Or they agreed upon the lie. This is insulting, man. We cannot go on like this. And I seen that this morning before I went to go out and work out, I seen that little goofy Negro lady work with the New York Times talking about the 1619 project. She's ignorant. That woman should be laughed at. Going around and these white folks put that woman up there to go teach that lie saying that the 1619 project, we brought in slaves in 1619. That's BS. Probably some damn Moors came over here because the fact that they were being, you had a 30 year war over in Europe. It was being, they expelled those Negroes from the uh, 30 year war was going on from 1618 to 1648. So they started expelling out those black Moors over from Europe and many of them was coming over here. They was intermarrying with the Aboriginal blacks here and then some of them were actually married with the white prisoners who were shipped over here. Causing them to basically bleach themselves out. I'm so tired of from these ignorant Negroes continue to give these ignorant lies, man. I continue to tell you over and over again. 
do your damn research. Do not listen to these Negro historians, these Negro Pan-Africans, man, because they're not teaching you nothing. Nothing. Not a damn thing, man. Not a damn thing. So we must continue to learn, to grow, and to learn our history, man. We got to really, really, really do some study. And since I brought up Moors, I'm just going to show you something real quick. Here's something about the Moors right here. A little bit about the Moors. Alright. The Moors did come to the Americas. And like I said, they mixed in, some of them mixed in with the Aboriginal blacks that were already here. So a lot of black people, there's some who, who may be just straight Aboriginal black, but a lot of black people are a mixture of the two groups. There weren't that many African slaves brought here. The amount was very minimal, so they mixed in with the other group of blacks, and, and they were absorbed within those groups. But like the Gullah Geechee, they're indigenous to the land, man. All right, and, and unfortunately, some of them have lost their knowledge of who they are, because some of them try to claim Africa. I know many of them don't do that. Many of them say they're aboriginal to this land, and that's truly what they are. But unfortunately, so many of people have been conditioned to hate ourselves. And this is not a hate of brothers and sisters over in Africa, the, the ones who are not cooning. It's just emphasize that we come from a rich history and culture here in America. This is our land. Don't tell me who the hell I am. This is our land. This is our home. My home is here in America. My Aboriginal ancestors were already here. Don't insult me telling me that I'm come from somewhere else, which I know I'm from here. I want brothers and sisters to understand this, man. This is a plea to go and get into study groups and study your damn history to the fullest. Because these people have lied to us seriously, man. They have seriously lied to us. They lied about every goddamn thing, man. Every damn thing. And it cannot be trusted, man. They cannot be trusted for anything. And these boule Negroes are a big problem, too. Because they, I said before in my videos in the past, they boast and brag about the university they attend, man. But obviously, they've graduated the university. they got masters or PhDs. And they still, they graduate coming out dumber than when they went in. Because all they're doing is they have been indoctrinated and they're regurgitating the false lies that have been given to them by their white oppressor or their Negro lackeys. This has to stop, man. Learn your true damn history. Learn it. Take it back. It is yours. Don't let no one tell you that you are foreign in your own land. I said this in other videos. This is your home. When you study this history, study the little details. I just showed you little details. Study those little details. Go to the library. I know in Chicago, all I'm open from 1 to 5 on Sunday. Go to the library. Study your history. Research your history. Do it all. But the information is there. There's no excuse for you not to obtain that information. Because it's right in your damn face. Alright? It's right in your damn face. Alright? Right in your damn face. And so, brothers and sisters, man, I just I just wanted to say that. I'm gonna say that big time. And um, when you look at this picture, this this the particular Indian. This brother look like the late Woody Stroll. Woody Stroll looked like this brother.
These are our ancestors, man. We've been here. All right? We've been here. So, tell the Pan-Africans. Check this out. To give it up. Tell the Pan-Africans. To tell them to tell you stop denying. Stop denying that our true history in America. Stop denying our true history in America. It's, we've been here. We stroll look just like this, brother. Alright? Peace and love, brothers and sisters. Learn your damn history. It's in your face. It's right in your face, man. Peace and love.